Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. So not that long ago I made a video talking about proposed changes to the motorcycle laws that the MCIA put forward. Now the way that it works is that the MCIA is an organisation that will suggest rule changes to our motorcycle licences and then the government may move on that. So at this point it is just a proposal, there is no date when it's going to come in, it may never come in, but it could be what we see in the future and I think some people might be quite happy about this one another one in other ways maybe not so much because you know I also recently talked about only ever doing the CBT once mm, well that may be a thing I did do this on the bike as you can see and I realized it's way too much information to try and get across without showing you some of the things in front of your eyes it's it's a lot to get in your head I've managed to do it pretty much but I think this is a better way of doing it so this is the PDF MCIA put out about this uh, I'm going to cover the key points. Now, the current licensing, I'm going to explain as quickly as I can so we can talk about, you know, the differences if you don't fully know the licensing currently. And this is how complicated the UK system is and how they want to improve it. So at 16, you can do the CBT, which is a one-day training course, and then you can ride a 50cc ped, as in moped, for two years. And then you have to take the CBT again. Because you're going to be 18 by that point, or 17, over the age of 17, or even if you come into it from nothing at 17, you do the CBT again, and at that point you're allowed to ride a 125 for two years, and then it runs out. And then you have to do it again, and you can repeatedly do that. Or what you can do is upgrade that to the A1, which allows you to ride a 125cc as a full license. So you don't need to retake it, but you're only allowed to ride a 125cc. So that would be CBT theory, mod 1, mod 2, and that gives you your A1. You don't need to have held the CBT for any amount of time to do that. Then if you have the A1 license and you've had that for two years, you can just take mod 1 and mod 2 and you're progressed up to the A2 level of 35 kilowatts. Or if you haven't had that previously and you've got no previous experience, you can do it through direct access, which is CBT, theory test, mod 1, mod 2, and then you've got 35 kilowatts. It's an A2 license. Then after two years of holding that license, you can do mod 1 and mod 2 and that gets you into the full license. Or... You can do direct access when you're 24, CBT, Theory, Mod 1, Mod 2, just like the, the A1 license, but the bike you do it on is different, and now you can ride any bike that you want. So that's the current system. Now because of this, people are tending to sit on CBTs as long as they can, uh, and then they may progress onto an A2 and then later progress onto the 4 license, or some people are waiting until they're 24 and then just going straight through the direct access route because you're not doing any of this other stuff, you're just straight through. And that's not really great because the whole idea of this is that inexperienced people don't get onto fast bikes without getting experience first, which makes sense. But if you just wait till you're 24, you're still totally inexperienced and yeah, okay, you're a few years more mature, but is it any that much better? And are you really just disincentivizing anyone young getting into motorcycling because of all the hurdles in between? That's what they want to try and get rid of. So one of the things is that you won't be doing mod one and mod two anymore. It will just be one test. Now, I assume that would be the same as mod one and, one and mod two shoved together, but it will be one test. You don't have to do it in two separate days, etc., etc. Although then again, does that give you more opportunity to fail? So this is where I was talking about the CBT, about not being allowed to retake it. Current system, CBT, you can just keep retaking that every two years, and then you do theory test mod 1, mod 2, of whatever license level you're doing. The proposed change is theory test CBT, so you have to do the theory for the CBT, which we previously talked about, and I think everyone agrees it's a good idea, but you are no longer allowed to keep redoing that CBT. You have to then do a CBT+, plus, which is like the CBT, but more... Their wording of this is basically you prove at this point you're progressing your skills, not just maintaining them. And then two years after that, you're allowed to take a test, which is the one test to allow you to ride anything, basically. And as it says here, um, the ATB test is an approved training body test, uh, approved tra motorcycle training products. Like might be schools rather than test centres that can do the assessment lesson. But yeah, it's a good idea. It means they actually test your riding to see what it's actually like, which is a much better idea, I think. But it does mean that the CBT loop is gone. You have to progress. And I know some people are not going to be happy about that because they like sitting on CBTs because that's what they can afford. Though it is worth pointing out at this point, for many people who say they have to sit on a CBT, you already have a 125. You have the insurance. You could just go and do your A1 test 
for a hundred pounds basically for the test fees. Oh, plus theory, so about 130. And then you've got an A1 license and you'll never have to redo a CBT. You don't necessarily need to get all that training. It doesn't have to be 600, 700 pound test because you've got all the extra days of training. If you can competently ride your bike with slow control and, and practice all the maneuvers you're supposed to do, like I've always taught in my videos, you should be able to walk through doing mod one and just ride like the police are behind you and follow the rules of the road on the mod two. There is the part where they say follow the signs. Just make sure that you just do everything you do safely. Even if you go the entirely wrong way, it's perfectly fine because all they'll do is at some point they'll say, okay, pull over up here. Okay, you went the wrong way there, but it's fine because everything you did was safe. They're the key proposed changes. You can see return to a single test rather than two, blah, blah, blah. Here's some of the category changes they are proposing. Okay, so they want to bring a new license level basically in at 14, which is to do with e-scooters and small electric vehicles, I would think, generally, rather than, yeah, electric. So that basically would be talking about legalising e-scooters to 14-year-olds if they pass a test. Uh, good idea, I guess, because it's better than them going around illegally doing it and getting crushed on the cars and stuff or just being a nuisance some of them are fine some of them are absolutely insane uh right these are the other proposed changes they rather than being allowed a 50 cc at 16 you'll be allowed with the a1 you will be allowed 11 kilowatts which is a 125 and that's with the am license now what does that mean for cbt you're still only allowed to ride a 50 and then a 125 at 17 i'm not entirely sure because they're just talking about full licenses here because you would be on a CBT at this point. Anyway, then at 17, if you're on an A1, you're only allowed a 125cc, 11 kilowatts. They're saying 22 kilowatts, which is about 25 brake horsepower, which is uh, like a Suzuki Azuma. And that's like a fast 125, which is just more comfortable than most ways. So yeah, at 17, as long as they've got their head screwed on right, and they've proven by passing a proper test here, that seems fine to me. A to 18 rather than 19, uh, which is 35 kilowatts which is the same as it is now, but just a year earlier. Then two years after that, you're allowed to upgrade to the full A license. And all you have to do to upgrade, rather than doing mod one, mod two again, is you just do this assessment with a training school, which I assume is an hour test or something like that. Uh, and then direct access, they want to drop that from 24 down to 21. So at 21 years old, you can go CBT, sorry, theory CBT, because of the new way they want to have it, uh, the test, so it wouldn't be mod 1 and mod 2, it would just be the test, and then you've got access to every bike on the road at 21. Okay, this answers my previous question about what if you're actually on a CBT rather than the A1 license. Uh, if you're on that CBT, you're still on a 125 with the same restrictions. Then the odd thing is two years later you can do the plus and then you two years after that you do the assessment and now, now you're allowed a 22 kilowatt which is... How does that work out? Because now you're 18, 19, 20, 21 and now you're at like 22 with a 20 two kilowatt i guess that's a per oh it's the permanent a1 that's why that's what it is because then you're allowed 22 kilowatts not okay yes these are crossing over okay let's find the a2 am a2 so 18 plus yes so that's earlier so it's if you wanted the a1 you can go through that process or with this at 18 you do theory cbt and then it's not saying cbt plus here it's saying you can just go on to do the single event test, you can ride up to 35 kilowatts. See what I mean by how confusing this is? Right, yes, I understand why there's those age overlaps. Now, it's because basically it depends on what license you're aiming for. If you were aiming for an A1, that would be your, your way to it. But if you're aiming for the A2, because at 17 you're going to have the CBT, it still qualifies you to then go on to do... The single test to get your A2 license and then the full motorcycle license is in the same way of the A2 progression. <laughs> God, this is why this is so complicated. Um, if you've already had the A2 for two years, then at 20 you can do your assessment lesson and get your full license. Or if you haven't, your direct, direct access is at 21. No A2 license theory, CBT, and then into that. <sighs> Jesus. So there you go. That is the proposed changes. The idea is to bring the ages down bring the level of training up, but also bring CC and the reward of what bike you can have at what age up with that. And in theory, it shouldn't be that expensive depending on the route that you're going into it. Because if you want the A2, well then you just CBT, CBT plus, then you're in your, your A2. Then again, that's four years on a 125 from what I can see, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little complicated. I do think allowing 21 year olds direct access to like 1000 cc bikes is going to increase the amount of accidents and deaths we will see because I think those three years are very important and there's a lot of maturing that goes on. But then again, waiting till you're 24 is kind of ridiculous because you should just be trusted to not be an idiot. But then people generally can't be. So yeah, I understand the thing. As long as no one else is involved in the accident, it's like, well, okay, it was your choice. At 20, I don't really see a problem with it because you've already gone through so much riding. You've shown so much experience at this point on a lower level bike and bikes possibly that, yeah, I can agree with that. So, yeah, I think I think it's okay. It's a, it's a good proposal and I think most people will be quite happy with it. Of course, some people are going to say, no, this is a complete tosh and it should actually be that you just do your your CBT theory and direct access at 17 and be allowed to ride whatever you want. Even if they did that, I think it would be prohibited by the fact that the insurance would be so expensive as it is for car drivers. Because yes, okay, car drivers can pass the test at 17 and in theory drive anything, but look at the cost of the insurance. As I say, if you want to read this document fully, this is the MCIA's PDF called a license to net zero proposal.pdf if you search that i'm sure you'll find it as i say generally i do agree with most of it i'm not sure about that not being able to repeat the cbt thing because for some people as i say they want to sit there and do that there is also the aspect which is some people who are a bit illiterate can't seem to pass the theory yes i'm dyslexic it was difficult for me i used apps to learn um and also the, the the systems read the questions to you and you can even get extra time if you're dyslexic and stuff like that if i remember rightly but I do understand why some people would be very concerned and it might cause some great anxiety for them, the idea that they may in the future not be allowed to keep repeating their CBTs. I've talked about enough of this recently that I've, I know there's lots of people who like repeating the CBT. It's actually their choice. But as I say, other than the theory you've got to get through and you can do that, getting your A1 license is not that difficult because you've got, you're on your bike, you know your bike, just practice your slow control stuff. As I say, this isn't necessarily going to happen in the next five years or ever, but this is a sign of things to come. And if people want this and they start maybe petitioning and getting behind it, it's more likely to happen. Interestingly, I think to point out here, I think these rules are not in line with the European Union's rules on licensing. And we have been kept to that even after we left the EU, because it made more sense, I guess. But this is something that may come out of us leaving the EU that wouldn't have been possible without it, to my understanding. Although, the funny thing is, countries within the EU do tend to pick and choose their rules to tour motorcycles. Um, they're quite different from country to country, even though they come from the same base rule book. So here you go. Huge thanks to my patrons for all your support and your patience as I'm getting on getting this merch stuff done. It's taking way more time. I'll do you another uh, patron exclusive soon to give you an update where I am with it. I am also working on that video of doing, making those clocks. Anyway, till the next one. Bye-bye.